Hey guys, so I've been wanting to do an update video on my Motorola Saber collection. Um, and I figured now would be a good time to do it. So I recently acquired this. This is a screen used uh, prop Motorola Saber radio from Jurassic Park. Um, it's just a fake, fake radio as you can see in the movie. Um, yeah, a huge shout out to my friend Phil. Um, he has a local like contact with Planet Hollywood and they were selling uh, a pair of these and we went in on it together so we got a better price because we bought both of them. Um, but yeah, this thing is just, it's really neat to have an actual one. Uh, I've been trying to find, you know, the right size of batteries and stuff to modify, you know, an actual uh, Sabre radio. But uh, yeah, this is just really cool. And you can see the uh, switch works. I put a new battery in it. And um, yeah, it's got the steady burn LED there and the, um, the menu channel six fake um, screen there. I'll, I'll post some pictures of the, uh, the thing taken apart. It does come apart very much like a, uh, like a real Motorola Saber. Let me see if I can do this one handed, there we go. So it does slide apart. Uh, the only thing is the battery actually doesn't do anything. There's no electronics here uh, or anything like that. It's all self-contained in the top uh, part of the unit there. But um, yeah, it's just really cool to have an original one. And um, yeah, no more looking for batteries. Like I was looking for the right size battery. This is the smallest one I could find um, that actually works. Um, I need to look through some of my old PDFs and see if I can find um, maybe a battery that is the right measurement. I don't know, maybe this is a modified one for the movie. Maybe they, you know, chopped them shorter and, you know, maybe re-sculpted this little part down here when they, uh, when they uh, mold and, and cast them. But yeah, so really neat. Like I said, I'll, I'll show some more, uh, some more pictures of it. Um, this is the COA and a little bit about it from Planet Hollywood. Uh, apparently it was purchased from Hand Prop Room in 1996. So uh, looks like uh, looks like they're still around. I looked up the website and it's like a prop warehouse rental company. So um, that is one thing that has always been kind of weird with these. Every single one of these radios that I've seen that has sold, um, at least in this configuration, the, the full hero prop version with the removable battery and the and the screws on the side has uh, has had this you know Motorola Saber sticker on it added it looks like after the fact so maybe this prop uh, hand proper maybe they added that in afterwards or something like that or you know after Jurassic Park maybe the production of Jurassic Park maybe they didn't want their branding on there so maybe they added it back later I don't know I'm just gonna leave it on it doesn't really bother me so um, or maybe it was some agreement with Motorola that since they copied their product, that they have to put the label on it. I don't know. But um looks like it was definitely added after the production. But it's just a sticker, so. Um, yeah, so there it is. It's got a weird belt clip. I don't think I've ever seen an, uh, like a real Motorola Saber with this. Maybe it was a, an aftermarket one for the time or a cheaper one or something like that. But uh, yeah, really neat. The uh, channel knob doesn't do anything. And the, the push to talk button does not do, uh, does not move or anything. It's just a uh, solid cast. Um, let me think. Uh, the next thing I wanted to update uh, you guys on was this. Where did it go? Oh, over here. Um, I mentioned in the other video that I had found a couple of the, uh, of the screen used, or not screen used, but uh, the same ones that they used in the movie. These walk or um, headsets. And I wanted to make a little adapter box to make it actually work with the Motorola Saber radio. And I did. So this little box here, I've kind of glued everything shut, but um, it's an adapter. I, I don't want to actually cut the uh, connector. So here's here's another, um, another unit that I have here. And this is the original plug that it had. It's the standard, you know, kind of uh, standard Motorola. I think, you know, it's just a different brand of uh, of walkie-talkie that they have, but it has this uh, two-pole uh, or two-prong plug there. So yeah, I got two from the same guy uh, several years ago, but 
Um, yeah, I made a little adapter box. And I put a little button on top for the push to top. So you can see there as I push that, it transmits. You might be able to hear it too. Let me see if it. It'll beep on that. Oops. I don't know if you can hear that on the camera, but um, yeah, it works great. Uh, I did pick up a voice active activated module too. This is an OEM Motorola one. Uh, I want to see maybe if I can get voice activated to work and like it operates in the movie. But for now, it's just a push button, push to talk. And what I did is I just bought a uh, just the cheapest Saber uh, headset, or I think this actually wasn't a headset. It was like a you know like a lapel mic or something, or uh, not a lapel mic, but a, you know, the shoulder mics. Bought the cheapest one I could find on eBay because I was going to hack it up anyways. So, uh, but yeah, that's that. And so this is a an actual first gen Motorola Saber radio. So you can see the differences there. This one has a broken knob. I need to order a new one. But um, you can see the uh, they're pretty much the same. The battery length, like I said, is different, but. Uh, I don't know if I'm ever gonna find one like that. What I'd like to do is um, take this radio here, maybe cut a battery short, kind of re-sculpt this side part here, and mold and cast these. Because I'd like to fill up my gang charger with radios, but I don't think I'm gonna find a, a, um, you know six of these or five or six of these uh, first gens. I have a few of them. Some of them are in kind of bad condition. This one's like perfect, so I might see if I can cast that one. And use this as reference to uh, to uh, to make it accurate. Um, but yeah, speaking of the gang charger, so in the last video, uh, I was kind of complaining about the um, the gang charger that you can normally find pr pretty easily for these uh, saber radios. It doesn't match what's in the movie. Uh, I think the movie one was completely custom. Um, it would make sense; it'd be pretty easy to make. Um, but yeah, so I found this. This is an older unit. Uh, I think it's for the, I'll have to look it up, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put it in the description if I can uh, find, out, find out what it was originally from, but um, let me see if I can pop one of these out. Yeah, there we go. So this was would have been the original socket, and I guess Motorola sold these uh, adapter uh, cups here. So I guess if you had older radios and then you uh, upgraded to Sabres, you could just buy these little adapters, but it does more closely match what you see in the movie. The way the, the front part here is shorter versus like the elongated one on the, on the new style. So I'm not saying this was the exact one because it's really hard to tell in that scene because it's very dark, but um, it looks like maybe this might've been the one that they've uh, kind of modeled the uh, the prop one after. But um, And as you can see, let me see here. Uh, they do fit in here. So the good thing about this one too is you can you can fit them backwards. So in the movie they were facing this way, even though the actual contacts are on the other side, uh, which uh, yeah. So uh, I put a little bit of tape on that one there in the contacts so it doesn't scratch up the uh, the screen used one here. But yeah, I'd like to get a whole bank of them. Um, and now that I have this for reference, um, I think I can make it happen. And um, also just to get the color right too, like. This was an early test I did, probably sometime in like 2008. And I got the color a little off. This is a little more cream. This one's uh, definitely more gray. Almost got like a like a blue gray kind of uh, kind of tinge to it. So um, yeah, I can definitely use this as reference and and maybe make a you know several of them here to, to fill the gang charger up. Uh, the last thing I wanted to cover was these. Uh, the leather carrying case, I still have not found the exact one. It could have been maybe even custom made for the movie, but um, they do have the studs in the bottom. I forget how many the screen use one has, but you can see in some shots where Ellie's wearing it and you can see the studs. But I believe it's a straight cut on this part. And so these are angled. This one's straight, but it's got this extra part here. So yeah, if anyone has any leads on those, you know, or if anyone wants to, you know, take a look at that. And, uh, it'd be cool if we can find the original one. Although, I mean, even if we do identify it, you know, they're probably pretty rare, so. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. Like I said, I'll try to uh, cut to some pictures of this thing kind of opened up 
and how they did, did the uh, light effect and stuff in there but um yeah well thanks for watching and yeah like i said if you guys have any leads on the uh on the uh, correct uh, holster you know let me know post in the comments all right well thanks for watching